pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my Friday Reads. I don't have much to say, so I'm going to be a little chatty at the beginning. Um, one thing, I don't want it to sound negative, it isn't negative, but I have realized, as I usually do about once every three years in my life, that I do have an addictive personality, and even the things that are healthy and wonderful about my life, I tend to overdo. So I have come to the realization this week that I, my name is Sean, and I'm a buddy readaholic. <laughs> so... I have just been doing too many buddy reads uh, for too long, and I need to cut back. So any of you that have buddy reads scheduled with me, I, I don't think you need to panic. I will uh, keep up with the ones I have scheduled for April, because um, there's not a whole bunch. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So I don't have any room in my reading life for spontaneity, and I, I'm starting to resent that. So starting by around May, I'm going to try to limit my buddy reads, which are such a source of, you know, readerly joy, but to limit them to no more than four a month. Boundaries, what a concept. <laughs> Limits, restraints. Huh. All right. I did a book-themed lesson with my students. Most of my classes, once a, we do have a standard how was your weekend conversation, conversation format three times a month. And then on the last week of the month, it's called Teacher's Choice, and I design or bring in something different. A game, board game, anything like that. Uh, and I decided to do a book-themed lesson, not activity for them. First, on the board, I, I elicited from them the two main types of books. There's only, every book in the world is either uh or uh, and was able to get from them fiction or non-fiction and then went through various uh, genres of fiction and nonfiction, and focused on the novel, short stories, poetry, and then on the nonfiction side, uh, uh, biography, autobiography, and memoir. And then I took autobiography out of the mix and said, okay, these five, here are five books, go! Please find out which is which. So they had fun. Sometimes it was easy. This biography of, que of Mary Queen of Scots says biography twice on the cover, so that was pretty easy. This novel, News of the World by Paulette Giles, says if they could read the script writing a novel. That was pretty easy. This book of poetry from Edmonton poet Laurie McFadden, Walking Through Turquoise, was more difficult for them, but if they looked at the back, it said she's a poet or author description, she's a poet. But some of them could get it from just the way that the text was arranged on the page. So that was very interesting and just made for interesting conversation. Most, a lot of my students are avid readers in Japanese and they were interested in, you know, looking at some English books. This one they had the most trouble with, An African in Greenland by Tete Michelle Pomasi. A wonderful memoir about this African dude going to Greenland for a year. And I had to, for many of them, I had to point to the fact that there were photographs, so it has to be nonfiction. And we already had a, a biography, so this must be a memoir. Yes, okay, that one was tricky. And the last one was easy for them if they looked at the title. As birds bring forth the sun and other stories. And then the second part of the activity was I, I made a crossword, and they had to look up these things in the books, for example. The surname of the African author. The first verb on page 58 of the memoir. The title of the 13th poem. The country name in one of the titles, and so on. And they had fun. I, I, I think some of them had fun. And then just talking about reading and which book sounded the most interesting. And when there was time in the lesson, I then had each student choose one book and just flip through it at random and select one word common word, not proper noun, but common noun or verb or something, adjective, that they didn't know, look it up in their dictionary or on their smartphone and then present that word to the class. So, yeah, pretty good, pretty fun activity, at least for me. <laughs> and I did something constructive and normal and adult, uh, actually during one of these lessons 
on Wednesday night, and I will never do it again. Because they were involved doing the crossword puzzle or whatever, and they didn't usually need me, it was kind of free time. The class time was kind of free time for me, which is one reason why I look forward to teacher's choice. <laughs> I decided, very uncharacteristically, to, to clean out my bag. Because especially lugging these five books, uh, you know, it was heavy, and I, I just... Only about once every two or three years do I actually clean out the bag. And so when I do, invariably, I find dozens of dead Amazon gift cards. So I do all my Amazon shopping. I don't have a credit card, so I, I buy the gift cards at the convenience store and add them to my own account, and that's how I shop on Amazon. And so you put in the code, and then the card is of no use, and it goes into the bottom of my bag. Well, those add up and add weight eventually, and receipts, and students are always giving a little one piece of candy or something as a souvenir, and those tend to go into the graveyard at the bottom of my bag. Those just a mess. So I threw out this much trash that night, put it in the in the trash can in that classroom. And that's another thing. One of my pet peeves about Japan is there are no public trash cans. None. And the reason for it is the most ridiculous thing. Dare I go down this? Dare I digress about this? There was the horrific terrorist attack on the subway 20 years ago with the sarin gas. And that attack had nothing to do with public trash cans. It was about, you know, they... The, the terrorists ignited something on the train which let put the gas out and killed a few people. It had nothing to do with trash cans. But since that attack, they have banned all public trash cans. So you're always walking around looking for a place to put your garbage. It just drives me crazy, especially because it had nothing to do with... Um, but they were paranoid somebody putting a bomb in a trash can. So uh, the convenience stores have trash cans that they glare at you when they see you walking into the store putting trash that they, is not related to purchases from their store. So this one classroom actually has a trash can, so I regularly use it. So put my trash in there. And carried on home after I teach, have three hours of classes and I came home and then I suddenly went, Aah! I had, just, just before I started teaching that night, I had gone to the convenience store because I had managed to scrimp and save $15, 1,500 yen from my weekly, you know, month allotment of cash. And I'm usually run over by about 20 bucks, but I had managed to save 15 bucks. And so I bought a $15 Amazon gift card, put it in my bag. So I'm scrambling, looking for it. When I got home that night, it was gone. I threw it out. I threw it out. It was only $15, so that's my lesson. Never clean. It's dangerous. Mom, are you listening? Jesus Christ. <coughs> All right, so there's my little chatty bits. I have finished two books. I finished this short story by Akhil Sharma, Cosmopolitan, part of the Faber Stories Faber 90 um, edi uh, editions of single bound short stories and I really liked it. I didn't love it. I really liked it. Doris is in my video. will go up tomorrow. It was my first by Akhil Sharma and I'm certainly interested to read more. And uh, just this morning I finished Mary McCarthy's The Group. This was a buddy read with Ange and Britta and I absolutely loved it. Five stars. Probably a top read of the year. Um, for a long time I have said that Zora Neale Hurston's novel Their Eyes Were Watching God, which was published around 1940, maybe, 1935, is the only American novel from the 20th century worth reading. So I now have to change that and say that this is the only novel worth reading from the second half of the 20th century out of America. This was just a stellar novel, just emotionally powerful, intellectually stimulating, intricately crafted, left me with so many questions. There was a stuff, a group of eight university friends graduating from Vassar College in 1933 and then the next six years of their life. And it was almost like a relay. And I don't want to say that too strongly because I don't think it was exactly that, but there was always two of the group in every chapter. 
in most of the chapters there was two of the group and then it seemed like one of them carried over to the next chapter and then was linked with another character and it was kind of like a relay structure just fabulous powerful i can't believe all the things about women's lives that made it into this novel in a way that was shocking to read in 2019 the story set in 1933 in the, in the 1930s published in 1963 and shockingly intensely relevant and just beautifully done you just read this that's my review i didn't bail on anything sorry and i didn't start anything new so i'll just finish up and talk about tbr stuff in the coming week i have a month-long buddy read starting april 1st with ollie bliss ollie bliss and i have had great fun and success buddy reading queer lit and we're going to continue that with this novel guapa by salim haddad haddad is was born in kuwait city in 1983 to a lebanese palestinian father and an iraqi german mother that's absolutely fascinating this novel is set in an unnamed arab country and it's about it's a gay love story it's about a gay relationship i've heard nothing but good about it it's been on my shelf for years and when Ollie and I realized it had it was sitting on both of our shelves. This was what we chose. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm not sure I will get started on this before you see me again in my next Friday Reads, but possibly. This is a buddy read with Leah from Calgary, Vita Sackville West's novel All Passion Spent. I haven't read anything by Vita Sackville West. I am excited to read this. And that's going to be next weekend, starting Friday, Thursday, I'm not sure. At around the same time as this Friday Reads goes up will be my TBR for Aussie April. And I will get started on one of the books I've chosen for that, the shorter one. And that is Nicholas John Turner's Hang Him When He Is Not There. I talked about this in a recent book haul and I talk about it a little bit more in the TBR. So I'll just show it to you. I'm going to get started on that one. And... I just feel a need to do some more spontaneous reading, so I peruse what what I've got, which is hundreds and hundreds of unread books that I'm not don't have a buddy read scheduled for, and I will not accept a buddy read proposal from anybody. I just want to read them myself, and one of them is from the Women's Prize long list. That is another short one, Bottled Goods by Sophie Van Leeuwen. Just hauled this the other day. You've seen the haul video just went up yesterday. This is about uh, Romanians during the communist era when a family member defects to the West and what happens to the rest of the extended family left behind. Another short one. Again at random because uh, this is just a book that I've had for over a year and I'm dying to read it. It is from Singapore. State of Emergency by Jeremy Tiang. Uh, he's apparently considered one of Singapore's finest living writers. He lives in Brooklyn or it did at the time of this publication which this is what 2017 2017 and it is a very political story of set in the tumultuous days of leftist movements and political detentions in Singapore and Malaysia and I'm still reading Genji I'm there's other books that I'm still reading that I hope to finish up over the weekend there's a small chance that stuff that was left over from the I Heart Dorisathon I might sneak or the Irish Readathon I might sneak in this weekend but I I don't think so. I think I'm just going to finish up what I got and start some of these babies on Monday. That's what I have to say. What do you have to say? Thanks for watching.